Welcome back. A hostage drama at a cafe ended peacefully after the police arrested the suspect and freed the hostages. The drama lasted several hours. While the motive behind the incident is not yet clear, authorities are confident it wasn't a terrorist attack. Details in inside this report. On Saturday, officers cordoned off a square in central Netherlands after an armored attacker took three hostages in a cafe. Heavily armed police and special arrest teams gathered outside the cafe with about 150 homes nearby evacuated. After hours of standoff, the authorities finally arrested a man with a ski mask on and secured the release of the hostages. Uh, this morning we had a situation in the center of, uh, of Ada, uh, where a hostage taker took three hostages. Later on it would be four hostages in a, ca in a cafe, the people who were working uh, uh, there. Uh, fortunately we are happy. Uh, there was a lot of emotion uh, in the surrounding of course, we had to evacuate uh, the, uh, the area. But at the end is uh, everything uh, uh, fine, the hostage taker is uh, arrested by, uh, by the police and they are now speaking uh, to him and the, hostage, the hostages are, uh, are free, are very uh, emotional, they are with the family and of course in the city a lot of people, also people from the shops and uh, the people who had to be evacuated to the city, uh, to the city hall are quite emotional so we will take care of, uh, of that and police and uh, the uh, uh, justice will talk to the hostage uh, taker. The Dutch authorities did not reveal the identity or the motive of the attacker. As far as we know, it's a Dutch man, it's a Dutch citizen, and they are talking to him. He is known by the, by the police and by uh, justice. No, we have uh, not a, an idea of motive, but it's not that we know for sure. It's not a terroristic motive. It's not. All hostages were reported to be safe by the Dutch authorities. However, no further information was revealed about the victims. Duro Report, Republic TV. Well, it has been over a week now since the horrifying Moscow terror attack sent shockwaves across the world. Ambassadors of foreign countries laid flowers at the site of the attack on a suburban Moscow concert hall where 139 people were killed. Here is a look at this report. Foreign ambassadors in Moscow paid their respects by placing flowers at the location where a ruthless terror attack claimed at least 150 lives. Those in attendance included ambassadors from the United States, EU countries, Africa and Latin America. Since the attack, thousands of people brought flowers, wreaths and other tokens such as teddy bears at a makeshift memorial. The number of victims of the raid continues to rise, with the Russian state news agency TASS reporting Saturday that the number of people injured had increased to 551 quoting figures from the Moscow Regional Department of the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry. Agency Report, Republic TV. Well, let's move on to some of the other top world and sports news stories now. Families were placed, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, flowers were placed on the Hollywood Walk of Fame star of late actor Louis Gossett Jr. He was the first man to win a supporting actor Oscar and win an Emmy for his role in the seminal TV series Roots. Real Madrid trained at their base in Valdebebas in Madrid ahead of the Spanish La Liga game against Atletico Bilbao. Bilbao visits Santiago Bernabeu on Sunday evening for the top four clash. 
Leaders uh, Real Madrid are eight points clear of their nearest rivals Barcelona in second. Bilbao are in the top four, a point ahead of Atletico Madrid. Real Madrid coach Carlo Ancelotti spoke to the uh, media ahead of the Athletic uh, Bilbao's visit to Santiago Bernabeu. Ancelotti was asked if he is worried about Vinicius Junior after his breakdown. He said he is worried about whether he would be able to play or not. Paris Saint-Germain trained at their base in Paris ahead of their French League One game away at Marseille. PSG will visit the Stade Velodrome today. Will players such as Kylian Mbappe and Ousmane Dembele being put through their paces? Karim Benzema missed a penalty, but uh, Al Ittihad managed to come back uh, from a goal down to beat Al Fayyad 3 1 at home in the Saudi Pro League. It was Marwan Al Sahafi who sealed the score for Al Ittihad beating. To Joe Wukic in the 94th minute from Abdaraz Gahamad Allah's assist. Horses raced in, the, in Macau for the last time on Saturday because the Macau Jockey Club is closing down from April 1. Following a sudden announcement in January this year, after more than four decades of operation, crowds and income have also declined. A pioneering venue renowned for its blend of Pan-Asian cuisine and transgender cabaret performances is bidding farewell to its longtime home in San Francisco. Opened in 1998, Asia SF quickly became a cultural landmark, attracting visitors from around the world to revel in its unique blend of entertainment. Thousands of fans, many dressed in elaborate cosplay, flocked to the annual WonderCon event in Ahahem. The annual convention celebrates both old and new comic books, film and television from classic franchises like Star Wars to newer shows including Bob's Burgers. It's a Super Sunday IPL clash. Gujarat Titans take on Sunrisers Hyderabad in the first match. Defending champions Chennai Super Kings will lock horns with Delhi Capitals in the second clash at 7.30 p.m. Well, up next, as what uh, swords of land continue to be flattened in Gaza, Ceasefire seems to still be a far-fetched uh, reality. Standing in solidarity with the Palestinian uh, protesters in the Pakistan city of Karachi, protesters protested against Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Here there is a report. Many people in the Pakistani city of Karachi protested against Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Carrying banners and posters, they lit lamps and chanted Free Palestine. Protesters expressed disappointment with the response of Muslim states to Israel's war. I am a Muslim इतने सारे हमारे मुसलमान मुल्क हैं मगर एक ने भी इसके खिलाफ आवाज नहीं उठाई है स्पेशली सऊदीया जो इनको स्पेशली मतलब इनको हेल्प कर रहा है इनको सपोर्ट कर रहा है बंबार्टमेंट्स में द डेमोन्स्ट्रेटर्स वॉइस देयर एंगर अगेंस्ट इजराइल्स ऑफेंसिव इन गाजा इजराइल एक नाजायज रियासत है उसने फलस्तीन पर कब्जा किया उसके खिलाफ हम सबको डटकर खड़ा होना चाहिए हमें बात करनी चाहिए और आज के احتجاج का भी बुनियादी मतलब यही है कि फलस्तीन फलस्तीनियों का है इजराइल एक नाजायज रियासत है एज द वॉर कंटिन्यूज टू रैवेज द लैंड ऑफ गाजा सीज फायर स्टिल सीम्स लाइक अ फार फेचड रियलिटी एजेंसी रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी well, that's it on World This Morning. But news and updates continue on the other side. NCP Sharad Chandra Pawar, Supriya Sule to face off Ajit Pawar's wife, Sunetra Pawar, in the Baramati constituency for the upcoming polls. 
Home Minister Amit Shah to campaign in Rajasthan today. The Home Minister will hold meeting of core groups of seven Lok Sabha constituencies and hold a roadshow in Sikar district. Prime Minister to be in Rajasthan on Tuesday. Headlines this morning, uh, India Alliance leaders to hold protest over Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Uh, the protest to take place at the iconic Ram Leela Medan in the national capital. The BJP releases eight list uh, of candidates uh, contains 11 names including Sushil Kumar Rinku from Jalandhar who had jumped ship from the Amadmi party just a few days ago. Prime Minister Modi to today address a mega rally in Meerut in Western Uttar Pradesh uh, with just days to go for the polls, uh, RLD Chief Jayant Chaudhary to be present. NCP Sharad uh, Chandra Pawar's uh, Sharad Pawar's Supriya Sule to face uh, against Ajit Pawar's wife Sunitra Pawar in the Baramati constituency for the Lok Sabha polls. Home Minister Amit Shah to campaign in Rajasthan today. The Home Minister uh, will hold uh, meet with core groups of seven Lok Sabha constituencies and hold a roadshow in Sikhar district as well. The Prime Minister to be in Rajasthan on Tuesday. Uh, you are watching the Morning Express. Uh, I'm, I'm Samiksha Srivastava. In fact, starting first up with election-related updates, uh, the team to decide Modi ki guarantees uh, for the Prime Minister's third term for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls uh, has been announced. Uh, the 27-member panel is headed by former BJP President Rajnath Singh. The panel consists of top union ministers, chief ministers and former chief ministers, which reflects upon the immense experience of governance and delivery that will give uh, rather propel India's growth to a higher level. Pradesh ke vikaat mein sabse badi divar Article 370 ki thi Is divar ko Vajapa ki sarkar ne hata diya the BJP has announced the team that will make PM Modi's guarantee for the next five years. The 27-member panel will be headed by former party president Rajnath Singh. The power-packed panel also has top names in both the centre and state government. The list also shows the emphasis that BJP puts on aspiration of states. PM has also taken the opposition over the manifesto. The PM has delivered on his promises and with his aim of making Vixen Bharat by 2047, India is waiting for PM's vision document for the next five years. Aaj pura Hindustan janta hai, aray puri dunia bhi maanti hai ki Modi ki guarantee matlab guarantee pura hone ki bhi guarantee. Bureau Report, Republic TV.
Now, with the clocks uh, ticking before the courts uh, to convene once again uh, to hear Kejriwal's matter and in the run-up to gain sympathy and to target the centre, the Indie Bloc uh, leaders have planned a mega protest at Ramlila Baidan uh, in the national capital today. The stage is set for the Indie Bloc's protest at the Ramlila Maidan in the national capital. The opposition leaders will come together to decry Kejriwal's arrest by ED in the Liquor Gates camp. The protest will mark the biggest anti-government protest ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. With less than 24 hours to go for the mega indie bloc protest, Kalpana Soren, the wife of another jail chief minister, Heman Soren, met Sunita Kejriwal. Kalpana Soren and Jharkhand Chief Minister Champai Soren will take part in the rally tomorrow. The Leaving no stone unturned, Delhi Minister Saurabh Bharadwaj hit out at the centre over Soren's arrest as well. Because Heman Soren Ji was the opposition of a big leader. और गैर भारतीय जनता पार्टी राज्यों में एक अच्छी सरकार चला रहे थे प्रसिद्ध नेता थे उनको जिस तरीके से केंद्र सरकार ने जेल में डाला वो सब लोगों ने देखा और उसके बाद अरविंद केजरीवाल एक दूसरी राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री को जेल में डाला गया केंद्र सरकार ने इन दोनों के जो हस्बैंड्स थे उनको जेल में डाला है और दोनों ने अपनी स्थिति एक दूसरे के साथ बातचीत की एक दूसरे को हौसला दिया और बड़े अच्छे वातावरण में बातचीत हुई ये तो हद ही हो गई है कि एक चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को आज केवल किसी के आरोपों के आधार पर उठा करके जेल में डाल दिया गया जिसके आरोप के आधार पर जेल में डाला गया उसको बेल दे दी गई और वो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को साठ करोड़ रुपए का जो है चंदा दे देता है तो ये जो पूरा खेल चल रहा है इसके खिलाफ कल इस रामलीला मैदान से पूरा देश भर से इंडिया गठबंधन के लीडर आ रहे हैं दिल्ली के लोग मिलकर के अपनी आवाज बुलंद गठबंधन की रैली है किसी एक व्यक्ति केंद्रित रैली नहीं है और इसमें सारे पार्टियां शामिल हैं सारे नेता शामिल हैं और व्यक्ति को बचाने के लिए नहीं है संविधान को बचाने के लिए लोकतंत्र को बचाने के लिए निष्पक्ष चुनाव को बचाने के लिए हम अपने आप को मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी कहते हैं पर जिस तरीके से डेमोक्रेसी की हत्या हो रही है रोज Meanwhile, the BJP has slammed the opposition's clarion call for a mega rally, calling it a Bhrashtachar Bachao Andolan. What is this rally? It is nothing but Bhrashtachar Bachao Andolan, whose slogan can be Karenge hum Bhrashtachar, Kahenge isko Shishtachar. When Karwai takes place, hum chillenge atyachar atyachar. Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri reminded the people of a mega rally held by Anna Hazare a decade back. He called out the duplicity of the Aam Aadmi Party's alliance with Congress, which Kejriwal had called corrupt at the same Ram Leela Maidan. This rally is happening where I think that from 12-13 years ago, in the Ram Leela ground, Anna Hazare Ji had an Andolan going on. उस आंदोलन में श्री अरविंद केजरीवाल जी भी भाग ले रहे थे। उस समय वो कहते थे कि वो तो सोशल एक्टिविस्ट हैं और वो कभी राजनीति में नहीं आना चाहते हैं। तो उसकी तो बात छोड़िए। पहले ये आंदोलन किसके खिलाफ था? उस समय सत्ता में कौन सा राजनीतिक दल था? Another BJP leader also hit out at the Indie Bloc, calling it a Ghamandi alliance. The Indi Alliance has absolutely sunk. It is nothing but a consortium of Ghamandi people who are trying to character assassinate Prime Minister Modi, who target the women of our country, who are not empathetic towards the youth of our country and have questioned the very belief in our Sanatan faith. 
I think the time has come to give them a, a befitting answer and that they will get on the 4th of June. On the other hand, Jammu and Kashmir National Conference also confirmed Farooq Abdullah's participation in the mega Indie Bloc rally. No, no, uh, India Alliance ke taraf se uh, kal uh, Delhi mein Ramlila maidan mein ek uh, program uh, kiya ja raha hai aur National Conference ke taraf se hamare sadar Jinnah Farooq Abdullah sahab wo shirkat karenge usme. It's a big day tomorrow for the Indie Bloc. It remains to be seen if the mega rally would yield anything at all for the opposition. Bureau report, Republic TV. Now the enforcement directorate questioned Delhi minister and top up leader Kailash Gehlot in the excise policy scam. Uh, he was grilled for more than five hours uh, for his role in the scam, his connection with Vijayanair, who is now turned uh, an approver, and his role in preparing the draft of the policy that has now been scrapped. ED heat in Likagate case continues to haunt up Netas. Days after Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest in the liquor policy scam, Transport Minister and AAP leader Kailash Gelot was summoned by the Enforcement Directorate. Gelot was questioned for his role in the Delhi excise policy. Gelot was a part of the panel that prepared the draft of the now scrapped liquor policy for 2021 to 2022. ED claims the draft was leaked to the South Group that paid kickbacks to the Aam Army Party. ED also alleges that Kailash Gehlot allowed Vijay Nair, who was then AAP communication in charge and is one of the accused in the case, to use his official residence when the policy was being drafted. Gehlot, just like Arvind Kejriwal, has denied the charges. लेकिन मैं आज भी और पहले भी अपने ही जो मेरा प्राइवेट रेजिडेंस है वकील कुंज जी मैं वहां पे रह रहा हूं मेरे जो बच्चे हैं वो क्योंकि मेरा जो घर बसनुगुज में है वो डीपीएस के बिल्कुल सामने है और मेरी वाइफ ने और बच्चों ने वहां से शिफ्ट करने के लिए मना कर दिया था तो इसलिए ना मैं कभी जो सिविल लाइन जो बंगलो है मेरे नाम पे जो लॉटेड है ना मैंने कभी वहां शिफ्ट किया और ना मैं कभी रहा वहां while the Aam Aadmi Party continues to play the victim card and slam BJP for misusing the central agencies. Sara jo mamla hai, wo adalat ke samak chai. Aur aaj tak ED, CBI, chhape maariyaan karti rahi hai, giraftariyaan karti rahi hai. Lekin abhi tak koi bhi aisa thos saboot agencies ko nahi mila. Bharati Janata Party का जो पूरा ऑपरेशन है ईडी सीबीआई तो उसके टूल हैं उसके माध्यम है कॉलिंग इट कर्मा द बीजेपी हैज हिट बैक सेइंग आप इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस ऑफ इट्स ओन एक्शंस देखिए हमारा पहले से मत था कि शराब घोटाले में आम आदमी पार्टी के कई सारे नेता मुख्यमंत्री समेत शामिल हैं और जांच एजेंसी अपना काम कर रही है और कई परदर परत खुलासे हो रहे हैं तो मुझे लगता है अब शराब घोटाले में और नए किरदार सामने आएंगे जिस जिसने चोरी की है जिस जिसने भ्रष्टाचार किया है उसे जवाब तो देना ही पड़ेगा विद द लोकसभा पोल्स जस्ट वीक्स अवे विल द आम आदमी पार्टी एंड द इंडिया अलायंस स्टैंड अ चांस टू स्टैंड टॉल नेक्स्ट टू बीजेपी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी Prime Minister uh, to kickstart his Lok Sabha election campaign in Meerut today. Uh, RJD Chief Jain Chaudhary and BJP candidate Arun Govil to be present in the rally. The ED questioned Delhi Minister and top uh, Aam Aadmi Party leader Kailash Gehlot in Delhi's uh, excise policy scam. Gehlot was grilled for his role in the scam, his connection with Vijay Nair and his role in preparing the draft of the policy. After being questioned by the ED, Delhi Minister uh, Kailash Gehlot denied the allegations against him, saying that he has never been a part of the Goa election campaign. Uh, note that ED has alleged that Kailash Gehlot was part of a panel that prepared draft of the liquor policy for the year 2021-2022.
कुछ एक्साइज पॉलिसी के बारे में उन सभी का जवाब दिया गया और हर तरीके से कॉपरेट किया गया कितने घंटे देखिए साढ़े ग्यारह बजे से लेकर आम आदमी पार्टी लीडर पार्टी टू ऑर्गेनाइज अमेगा रैली टुडे टू डेमोस्ट्रेट दिस सपोर्ट टू अरविंद केजरीवाल इंडिया लाइन्स विल बी अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस रैली टॉप लीडर्स इंक्लूडिंग द लाइक्स ऑफ राहुल गांधी शरद पवार एंड उद्धव ठाकरे टू बी इन अटेंडेंस Former Bihar Deputy Chief Minister and RJD leader Tejasvi Yadav said that the opposition leaders are being targeted because Prime Minister is scared of fighting elections and does not want anyone to stand against him. Wife of JMM leader and former Chief Minister Hemant Sorin met Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's wife. She also met Congress Parliamentary Party Chairperson Sonia Gandhi to discuss the situation in Jharkhand. Union Minister Anurag Thakur uh, hit out at the Congress by calling it a political party that lives uh, in arrogance and violates uh, law for the condemned Congress for supporting and standing with Kejriwal. Congress apne bhrashtachar ka chola utar kar jo UPA ka chehra badal kar India Alliance rakhne ka prayas kiya wo kahi safal nahi ho paya. Congress ka bhrashtachar aaj bhi sir chad ke bol raha hai. कांग्रेस के सांसद के घर से साढ़े तीन सौ करोड़ रूपए पकड़े गए और कांग्रेस भ्रष्ट और कट्टर बेईमान अरविंद केजरीवाल के साथ खड़ी नजर आई द बीजेपी हैज रिलीज इट्स एथ लिस्ट ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स फॉर द लोकसभा पोल्स बीजेपी हैज फील्डेड प्रनीत कौर फ्रॉम पटियाला तरनजीत सिंह संधू फॉर्मो ऑन बॉय फ्रॉम अमृतसर Delhi BJP president uh, in fact uh, BJP national president JP Nadda has announced the election manifesto committee for the Lok Sabha elections the committee will be spearheaded by Rajnath Singh Lok Jan Shakti party has released a list of candidates for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls party chief Chirag Paswan will contest from Hajipur other contenders uh, include Rajesh uh, Verma in Khagaria and Sambhavi Choudhury Sambhavi Choudhury in from Samastipur constituency Now amid uh, the uproar surrounding Supriya Srinath's uh, comment on Kangana Ranaut another senior congress leader and former minister has made a misogynist remark by saying that women should be confined to the kitchen this uh, has put the leader under fire with the bjp even f- uh, filing a complaint against the congress leader and in the latest dk shiva kumar has tried to downplay uh, the misogynist remark by saying that uh, this was only said in light humor one day after congress's senior leader's misogynistic remark <laughs> Karnataka's deputy chief minister DK Shiv Kumar downplayed the misogynist remarks distancing himself from condemning Shomanur Shivashankarappa including all of them it applies for him also sir come sir give me a quote sir he doesn't want he is in a humorous way he has said he is a very senior man he respect women we have also given to his grand uh, daughter in law this way he's absolutely downplayed it but also in the beginning of this particular statement before it has been cut off he's also spoken in kannada he states uh, that uh, this applies for shamnur shivshankrappa as well as all we will not disrespect anybody is what was uh, dk shivkumar's actual statement and also considering the fact that the congress party respects women this is dk shivkumar's statement in itself he states that a ticket has also been given to his daughter in law meaning to state that prabha mallikarjun is also a woman and we have given her a ticket as well so this is basically undecided statement coming in from dk shivkumar as well but uh, absolutely condemnable that he stated that he's made it in a humorous way as well so all said and done now so far shamnur shivshankrappa has uh, not Uh, you know he's not gone ahead and apologize neither is there an official apology coming in from the congress party badminton star sanya nehwal condemned the congress pointed out the stark contrast between bjp and congress's approach towards women empowerment 
five days after Supriya Shinate's rate cut comment on Kangana Ranaut. Top Congress leader Shamanu Shivashankarappa has now stoked a fresh controversy with a sexist remark. His misogynistic remarks were directed at BJP's Devangare candidate Gayatri Siddeshwara. The BJP candidate took a strong stance, condemning the misogynist remarks. BJP leaders backed Gayatri and shamed Shamanu Shivashankarappa. BJP has in fact also lodged a complaint against the Congress legislator. Once he faces the backlash, I hope that he uh, understands his mistake and uh, apologizes for the same. Is the BJP looking to pursue this? Absolutely, absolutely. The BJP has already complained to the election commission. We certainly expect an apology from the Congress party. The long-awaited Lok Sabha polls is right around the corner, but the Congress has been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. How are these controversies going to shape the stage for Congress ahead of the polls? Bureau Report, Republic TV. And uh, with that, uh, we are heading it away. Short break uh, coming up on the other side. Prime Minister Modi uh, tracking the latest uh, on election front. Prime Minister to address today a massive rally in Meerut. And uh, NCP's uh, Sharad Pawar's uh, it's Supriya Sule versus uh, Sunitra Pawar from the Baramati constituency in Maharashtra. Now, President Draupadi Murmu awarded uh, the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian honour to former Prime Ministers P.V. Narsimha Rao and Chaudhary Charan Singh, uh, the agricultural scientist M.V. Swaminathan and two-time former Bihar Chief Minister uh, Kapuri Thakur as well, posthumously uh, during a ceremony that was held at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in the national capital uh, on Saturday. Uh, the veteran L.K. Advani was also conferred the Bharat Ratna. Here are the highlights. President Draupadi Murmu conferred the highest civilian honour, Bharat Ratna, to five remarkable individuals. Notably, President Murmu conferred the prestigious award to the 96-year-old BJP stalwart LK Advani. Advani, a founding member of the BJP, is credited with shaping the party's trajectory during the 1990s and also served as the Deputy Prime Minister of India. The President also conferred the award on to the late Prime Ministers Chaudhary Charan Singh and P.V. Narsimha Rao. Former Bihar Chief Minister Karpuri Thakur, who still defines Bihar's politics 36 years after his death, was also bestowed with the top civilian award. <laughs> मैं अपनी तरफ से अपने परिवार की तरफ से विहार की शोषित पीड़ित लांछित की तरफ से भारत सरकार के प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करता हूं कि उनके जैसे लोगों के लिए यह पहला अवसर है जिसके लिए वो लड़े मरे उसको भारत सरकार ने सम्मानित करने का काम किया ये हम लोगों के लिए ऐतिहासिक पल है और शब्दों में बयां करना बड़ा मुश्किल है इससे ज्यादा वो दूसरे के बारे में सोचते थे उनके जो काम करने की ये थी दिन रात चाहे वो रात में भी आते थे उनका टाइम मैनेजमेंट बहुत ज्यादा 
चूँकि टाइम उनका उतना मैनेज नहीं होता था लेकिन जितने देर वो आते थे रात में भी अगर मैं देखती थी कि रात में भी आते थे तो खाना जितनी देर खाते रहते थे उतनी देर वो किसी दूसरे को कहते थे तुम बुक पढ़ो मैं सुन रहा हूँ उतनी देर तो वो वो चीज़ जो है ना वो बहुत मतलब उनकी हर चीज़ ही शिक्षा थी लोगों के प्रति प्यार था सिर्फ लोगों के लिए ही सोचते थे पूरी ज़िंदगी उनकी समर्पित थी गरीबों पिछड़ों दलित शोषित और देश के विकास के लिए और यदि एक चीज़ कहें इतने शब्द की भी एक चीज़ तो समता के लिए उन्होंने पूरा जीवन कुर्बान किया तो उसका आज फल मुझे मिला है हम लोग को मिल रहा है उनके समय में तो यह नहीं मिला शायद उनके जीवन काल में मिलता तो बहुत खुशी होती डिस्टिंग्विश्ड एग्रोनॉमिस्ट एम एस स्वामीनाथन वॉज ऑल्सो अवॉर्डेड पोस्ट यूमिस्ली द अवार्ड bestowed upon some who have truly shaped the future and growth of india are now rightfully and for all intents and purposes bharat's ratnas bureau report republic tv and with that uh, we head into wait short break uh, tracking closely all election related updates prime minister to address a massive rally in meerut today Karachi rallies against Israeli bombardment of Gaza demands for free Palestine that echoes through the streets. Hopes for ceasefire before Ramadan are dashed as Israel-Gaza conflict persists. Refugees pray amidst crisis, mosque destroyed, and strikes. Desperate fights uh, erupt in Gaza as air dropped humanitarian aid sparks fatal clashes concerns mount over effective distribution amid looming famine Islamic Jihad leader makes a bold declaration in Tehran expresses gratitude for Iran's support amid the uh, Palestinian struggle Cafe hostage uh, drama ends a uh, peacefully suspect arrested hostages freed after hours long standoff And we begin first up uh, with the latest from Russia it's been more than a week now since the horrifying Moscow terror attack took place uh, that sent shock waves across the world ambassadors of foreign countries have laid flowers uh, at the site of uh, the attack on a suburban Moscow concert that has claimed lives of more than 140 people foreign ambassadors in moscow paid their respects by placing flowers at the location where a ruthless terror attack claimed at least 150 lives своё иностранное дело российской федерации разрешите выразить вам глубокую признательность за ваше участие в сегодняшней церемонии посвященной памяти невинных граждан, которые стали жертвами варварского террористического акта. Those in attendance included ambassadors from the United States, EU countries, Africa and Latin America. Since the attack, thousands of people brought flowers, wreaths and other tokens such as teddy bears at a makeshift memorial. The number of victims of the raid continues to rise. With the Russian state news agency TASS reporting Saturday that the number of people injured had increased to 51, quoting figures from the Moscow Regional Department of the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry. Agency report Republic TV. Now as uh, the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza the continues unabated, ceasefire seems to seems to be a far-fetched reality and standing in solidarity With the Palestinians suffering were protesters in Pakistan's uh, Karachi who protested against what they said Israel's uh, bombardment of the Gaza region. Many people in the Pakistani city of Karachi protested against Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Carrying banners and posters, they lit lamps and chanted Free Palestine. 
protesters expressed disappointment with the response of Muslim states to Israel's war. मैं मुसलमान मुल्कों से भी दिल बर्दाश्ता हूँ कि इतने सारे हमारे मुसलमान मुल्क हैं मगर एक ने भी इसके खिलाफ आवाज़ नहीं उठाई है स्पेशली सऊदीया जो इनको स्पेशली मतलब इनको हेल्प कर रहा है इनको सपोर्ट कर रहा है बम्बार्टमेंट्स में The demonstrators voiced their anger against Israel's offensive in Gaza. Israel is a legitimate state. It has been attacked by Palestine. We should stand up for it. We should have a conversation. And today's protest has also the meaning that Palestine is a legitimate state. Israel is a legitimate state. As the war continues, to ravage the land of Gaza, the Palestinian Authority is calling for the ceasefire. As the war continues to ravage the land of Gaza, ceasefire still seems like a far-fetched reality. Agency report, Republic TV. Now, Israel and Hamas uh, had set uh, an informal deadline to reach a ceasefire negotiation uh, in Gaza ahead of the holy month of Ramadan. However, both sides uh, have failed to reach any kind of consensus. Uh, at one hand, Israel did not budge to give up control of Gaza. On the other side, Hamas, uh, the terror group, has refused to provide any proof uh, of life, uh, in fact, of uh, the hostages uh, who've been uh, taken, who remain uh, under the siege of the Hamas terror group. After hopes of a ceasefire deal ahead of the holy Muslim month of Ramadan fell apart in the Israel-Gaza conflict, refugees in Gaza continue to pray amid one of the biggest crises of their lifetime. Refugees at the Jabalia refugee camp descended on the streets to perform their prayers after their mosque was destroyed by strike during an offensive. <laughs> بهذا بفضل هذا الاحتلال النازي الذي لم يعرف لجريمته النكراء التاريخ مثيل لها اليوم لا نستطيع أن نؤدي التراويح إلا في الساحات في أماكن غير مهيئة للصلاة ولا للعبادة اليوم لا نرفع الأذان إلا من خلال سماعات يعني يعني صوتها ضعيف فيعني أين هذه الأجواء أين أمتنا من هذا الابتلاء العظيم نجوع لا نستطيع أن نصلي لا نستطيع أن نؤدي شعائر العبادية Despite their bombardment, the worshippers in the refugee camp pledge to continue their prayers against all odds. رغم الخصف والدمار الذي ارتكبه العدو بحق المساجد والبيوت والبشر والشجر، إلا أننا نحافظ على الصلوات في هذه المصليات. وبإذن الله تعالى سنؤدي هذه الشعائر ونحن في شهر رمضان وفي حرمة شهر رمضان رغم الألم ورغم ما تم من حصار وجوع وتضييق على أبناء شعبنا إلا أننا سنصر ونستمر في نهجنا وفي رضاء ربنا سبحانه وتعالى. The offensive of Israel that started as a retaliation to the brutal October 7 terror attacks by Hamas is still unrelenting after five months. The question remains, despite insistence of Western allies, resolution from the UN and plight of Israeli families and displaced Gazans, how long will the conflict go on? Agency Report, Republic TV. Now the humanitarian situation in Gaza remains uh, grim with massive food and humanitarian aid shortages. Airdrops have proven to be extremely vital in the sustenance of displaced uh, refugees in water on Gaza. Now while both Israel and Hamas continue to drag their feet over a ceasefire deal, Middle East and Western aid allies continue to deliver much needed aid to Gazans by airdrops in a hope to soon reopen land routes. As the offensive in Gaza continues, the looming threat of a famine in Gaza increases with each passing day adding on to the prevailing food shortages. This came after Israel intensified its offensive in the southern city of Rafah, making it extremely difficult for aid to be delivered by land route via trucks. With the sea route to Gaza for aid supply still under trail runs, airdrops has become the norm in Gaza to deliver essential aid supplies, an effort led by Jordan, UAE and now joined in by the United States. Over 200,000 MRE meals, over 
40,000 bottles of water and well over 500,000 pounds of aid for the gods. The tons of uh, aid that's dropped every day varies on the day. Today, for the C-17 only, we dropped over 100,000 pounds of aid into Gaza. Uh, the totals are well into the almost a million pounds of aid that we have dropped total. Other partners are NATO allies, such as the UK and Germany, uh, as well as Singapore just came in recently to help. And of course, the Jordanians are helping as well. However, a dropping aid in Gaza is not as easy as tying up grades to parachutes. It requires a higher degree of planning and sophistication in execution. We are flying as low as we can to provide a more accurate solution. We have a very complex computer system that looks at the wind, looks at the weight of the bundles, looks at the altitude we'll be flying, and calculates the precise spot where this bundle will be dropped in a circle of safety, more or less. Identify protective objects, whether they're mosques, schools, desalinization plants, and we will never drop bundles that are going to potentially come anywhere near those protected objects. We choose drop areas that are not in large cities, they're open fields, they're near the coast, so that bundles provide the maximum amount of safety for the bundles not getting near. The U.S. and Western allies have made it clear that airdrops are only a temporary solution. And for the long term, welfare of the people in Gaza amid the ongoing escalations in the conflict, opening up of land routes is vital. Agency Report, Republic TV. And here's a look at news and brief explosions were heard and smoke was seen rising from uh, the direction of Khan Yunus region uh, in Gaza. This comes after Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu said that Israel will return to the table for ceasefire talks with Hamas. The Israeli military released footage of what it said were troops inside the Al-Shifa hospital in the Gaza Strip. According to Israel's defense forces during the operation, there were clashes uh, where Hamas terrorists were killed, including a senior Hamas leader. As concerns uh, over hunger continue to rise, a convoy of three ships and barge uh, with more than 400 tons of food for Gaza has left for Cyprus. So the ships are carrying items including rice, flour and other canned food products. Anti-government protesters took to streets in Tel Aviv to demonstrate against Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's government. The demonstrators demanded hostage release and expressed their anger over the way the Netanyahu government has handled the Israel Hamas war. Top diplomats from Egypt, Jordan and France met in Cairo for talks to discuss the Israel-Hamas war and Israel's looming offensive on the packed city of Rafah. You know, crowds of protesters took to streets uh, of London to call for an end to the conflict in Gaza. Protesters chanted and waved flags and banners while demanding a ceasefire. The demonstration was the 11th organised by pro-Palestinian groups in London since the conflict began on 7th of October. Peruvian president, meanwhile, has called herself an honest woman and rejected corruption charges against her after police raided her residence to investigate possible illicit enrichment. Uh, the president is being preliminary investigated for allegedly acquiring an undisclosed collection of luxury watches since coming to power in 2021. A funeral was held for slain New York City police officer after he was shot dead during a traffic stop. Uh, the de he was uh, the first New York City police officer who was killed in the line of duty in two years. A church service was held uh, at the site of last week's attack on a suburban Moscow concert hall that killed more than 140 people. That marks nine days since the tragedy, according to an Orthodox tradition uh, since the attack. Thousands of people have brought bunches of flowers and wreaths and other tokens, uh, creating a makeshift memorial at the location. A highway was closed uh, after a 
barge struck a bridge over Arkansas River. It was not immediately known what caused the barge to hit the bridge or whether anyone was injured in the collision. Uh, this uh, incident was reported in the France Scott Key Bridge area in Maryland. Now, in wake of heightened tensions, uh, the leader of Iran-backed Palestinian terror group uh, Islamic Jihad has vowed victory over Israel. The meeting between Al Naklaha and Iranian officials comes shortly after a visit by a top Hamas commander in the region. The leader of the Iran backed Palestinian terrorist group, Islamic Jihad Zayed Al Nakahala, made a bold declaration in Tehran. At a news conference, Al Nakahala expressed gratitude for Iran's support for the Palestinian people citing it as a crucial during struggle amidst war. Al-Nakhala emphasized the resilience of the Palestinians and their determination to achieve victory over what he refers to as the Zionist project. The meeting between Al Nakala and Iranian officials comes shortly after a visit by Hamas top leader. This is after the UN Security Council's approval of a resolution on Gaza demanding an immediate ceasefire and the release of all hostages. Agency Report, Republic TV. And uh, with that heading away, short break, uh, on the other side, the latest from Pakistan as Karachi rallies against Israeli, Israeli bombardment in the Gaza region. Cafe hostage uh, Drama ends peacefully, suspect arrested, hostages freed after hours long standoff. The drama at a cafe ended peacefully after police uh, arrested the suspect and freed the hostages. The drama lasted for several hours. While the motive behind the incident is not yet clear, authorities are confident that it was not a terror attack. On Saturday, officers cordoned off a square in central Netherlands after an armoured attacker took three hostages in a cafe. Heavily armed police and special arrest teams gathered outside the cafe with about 150 homes nearby evacuated. After hours of standoff, the authorities finally arrested a man with a ski mask on and secured the release of the hostages. Uh, this morning we had a situation in the center of, uh, of Ada. Uh, where a hostage taker took three hostages. Later on, it would be four hostages in a, ca in a cafe, the people who were working uh, uh, there. Uh, fortunately, we are happy. Uh, there was a lot of emotion uh, in the surrounding, of course. We had to evacuate uh, the, uh, the area. But at the end, is uh, everything uh, uh, fine? The hostage taker is uh, arrested by, uh, by the police and they are now speaking uh, to him. And the, hostage, the hostages are, uh, are free, are very uh, emotional. They are with the family. And of course, in the city, a lot of people, also people from the shops and uh, the people who had to be evacuated to the city, uh, to the city hall, are quite emotional. So we will take care of, uh, of that and police and uh, 
the uh, uh, justice will talk to the hostage uh, taker. The Dutch authorities did not reveal the identity or the motive of the attacker. As far as we know, it's a Dutch man, it's a Dutch citizen, and they are talking to him. He is known by the, by the police and by uh, justice. No, we have uh, not a, an idea of motive, but it's not that we know for sure. It's not a terroristic motive. It's not. All hostages were reported to be safe by the Dutch authorities. However, no further information was revealed about the victims. Bureau Report, Republic TV. Now, it's been uh, over a week uh, that uh, the mo horrifying Moscow era terror attack took place that claimed lives of more than 140 people. Ambassadors from foreign countries uh, have been paying tributes to all those who lost their lives in the terror attack. Foreign ambassadors in Moscow paid their respects by placing flowers at the location where a ruthless terror attack claimed at least 150 lives. Своим странным делом Российской Федерации разрешите выразить вам глубокую признательность за ваше участие в сегодняшней церемонии, посвященной памяти невинных граждан, которые стали жертвами варварского террористического those in attendance included ambassadors from the United States, EU countries, Africa and Latin America. Since the attack, thousands of people brought flowers, wreaths and other tokens such as teddy bears at a makeshift memorial. The number of victims of the raid continues to rise, with the Russian state news agency TASS reporting Saturday that the number of people injured had increased to 551 quoting figures from the Moscow Regional Department of the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry. Agency Report, Republic TV. Now, as humanitarian catastrophe continues unabated in the Gaza region, ceasefire seems to be a far-fetched reality. In fact, standing in solidarity with the Palestinians were protesters from Karachi uh, who protested against what they said Israel's bombardment of Gaza Many people in the Pakistani city of Karachi protested against Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Carrying banners and posters, they lit lamps and chanted Free Palestine. Protesters expressed disappointment with the response of Muslim states to Israel's war. मैं मुसलमान मुल्कों से भी दिल बर्दाश्ता हूं कि इतने सारे हमारे मुसलमान मुल्क हैं मगर एक ने भी इसके खिलाफ आवाज नहीं उठाई है स्पेशली सऊदीया जो इनको स्पेशली मतलब इनको हेल्प कर रहा है इनको सपोर्ट कर रहा है बंबार्टमेंट्स में द डेमोन्स्ट्रेटर्स वॉइस देयर एंगर अगेंस्ट इजराइल्स ऑफेंसिव इन गाजा as the war continues to ravage the land of Gaza, ceasefire still seems like a far-fetched reality. Agency Report, Republic TV.